a mm-hmm. bunch of questions, uh, but I'm just going to pick the one that I heard the most frequently. Um, yeah. And it was it had to do with whether or not you can change your body fat set point. Um, yes. So let's say, for example, you're someone who has historically had a, around a roughly 15 to 20 percent body fat. Say you're a male, um, you want to diet down and look a little bit leaner. So say you get down to I don't know eight or 10 percent. Um, do you think that you can change that that set point so that you can settle into that that new look, leaner look? Right. Okay. So sort of just so people are kind of clear on the the terminology. The idea of a set point is that the body has some set body weight or body fat that it defends. And by defend, I mean it tries to stay at that level, right? They, they've shown this in animals for years. Take an animal, overfeed it, its metabolism goes up, and hunger goes down, and it kind of returns to its normal body weight. Underfeed it, metabolism goes down, uh, hunger goes up, let it have food, and it kind of, and it'll, it, it's kind of, you know, the, the example I typically use is a thermostat. Thermostat, you set your temperature, that's your set point. Go above that, AC comes on, go below that, the heat comes on. This has been somewhat of a theoretical construct for a while. There, this is, they've been arguing about this for about 30 years, about whether or not it happens. Then again, they argued about whether or not metabolic adaptation existed for about 20 years, too, and we know now that it, it does. There's another concept called a settling point, which is environmental, right? So the idea is that if I take someone who's been inactive and eating a crappy diet and I increase activity and fix their food, they will eventually, their body weight and body fat will come down and they'll settle at that new level. And this argument has been going on for years, whether there's a true set point or just a settling point. And the answer is, it's both. (laughs) This is the most comprehensive model includes both and it has to. Within a range, fairly narrow range, body weight can change, you know, it'll tend to settle if you're a little bit more active and watching your diet, you're a little leaner and a little fatter or whatever. But once you get beyond a certain point, these metabolic adaptations kick in. These are inarguable. Like they, every study has, the only studies that ever didn't find a real metabolic adaptation was in extremely obese people. And there's no reason for the body to really adapt this adaptive thermogenesis. So the set point exists. Now we might ask, well, if it exists, why do people getting ob- get, keep getting obese? And that gets into environmental factors. Clearly our environment, we are surrounded by cheap, tasty, easily available food. That can overwhelm any biological system that, that could be in place. Animals don't have access to Pizza Hut, right? They, they, and even if you give animals access to, it's called a cafeteria diet, they basically give them cookie dough, they will eat themselves till they're obese, like if you give them the equivalent of the Western diet. So that can clearly offset it. The question you're asking is, does set point ever reset itself lower? Like, let's say your set point is theoretically, your body wants to stay at 18%. Can you ever bring that down? And the answer is, Probably not. Uh, most of the studies that have ever been done looking at what they, and it's mostly in obese people, right? Realize that researchers don't care about lean people. They don't have to. Uh, they're not, lean people are not the problem from a, a public policy health standpoint. If you look at the post obese that have been dieted down to some percentage below their, their previous body weight, there is some amount of metabolic adaptation that is present up to at least seven years. It never seems to go away. There, there's no indication that it will ever disappear or reset itself. It seems like it can go up. Some women, you'll notice, they get pregnant, and for whatever reason, like, it never comes back off. Um, obesity may be able to, to reset it upwards, but there's really no indication that it, it ever, like, it gets, that it ever resets itself in a biological sense. Hmm. Now, people will point out that, yeah, but how come the leaner, how come when you stay leaner for longer, it gets easier? That's probably behavioral. You know, most people, they're still, it's just, you, your habits are becoming so well entrenched. Your training is so consistent. Your diet is so on point time. Even if you start to slip, you usually catch yourself. Because let's face it, you, we know, you know, the belts get a little bit tighter. But there's really, unfortunately, no indication that set point can ever come back down. Mm-hmm. So until, you know, in, in no model they've ever examined, you know, you, they'll start animals down and keep them there and just it the, the body never adjusts to that new new body fat level or body weight unfortunately right so say my body wants me to be at 180 pounds but i like the way i look better at 165 um right what am i just always going to be hun- hungry at 165 or is there some way that i can increase my food intake once i get there uh to sort of offset that 
Yeah, and that's probably, you know, what a lot of the research that looks at like exercise and weight loss finds that it typically doesn't have an enormous effect on weight loss per se, mainly because they don't give people a lot of it. Like when you give people a lot of it, 600 calories, six days a week, that'll, that's, that's, a, that's a lot. But it, it really has shown its main benefit for weight loss maintenance. And I think that's a big part of it is that one, first off, realize that, that unless you're super lean, these, the metabolic adaptations have been in some way overstated. Like in, in the obese people, you diet them down to 10% below. Their resting metabolic rate is decreased by about 50 calories. Like it's not, um, some people are bigger than others. And actually most of the drop in uh, energy expenditure, most of the adaptive effect is in activity. It's because you're burning less during exercise and you tend to move around less. In the obese, it's like 75 to 90% of the total drop is in non-resting energy expenditure. It's not even resting metabolic rate that's being really impacted. So the total is like 150 calories a day and only 50 calories of that is resting metabolic rate. Now you see bigger differences when you're dieting because leptin is lower than it would be even at maintenance. But when you come up to maintenance, all these hormones at least come back towards normal. Um, so increasing activity offsets a big part of that decrease in whatever decrease in resting metabolic rate has occurred, but mainly it's a decrease in activity. So if suddenly you're burning 15% less calories in your aerobic exercise, well, you do a little bit more and that will offset that chain. Also by doing more exercise, you can eat physically more food and, and that will help to offset that. So that's like, you aren't really, you're not unfortunately eliminating the, the, any decrease in energy energy expenditure, but you are at least offsetting it with, with other activities so that you're not having to keep your food as constrained for as long.